Hello, this is Sovereign Privacy. And today we're going to go through the installation process for Graphene OS on a Google Pixel phone. This will be a short video because the installation is actually very quick and easy. So I just got a new Google Pixel 9a and well, there's some initial setup that we need to do. The first thing you'll need to do is turn on your phone and run through the Google Android initialization process. You'll need to connect to Wi-Fi when you're doing this, but you will not need to connect to a Google account or do anything else. Run through that setup, and once you've done that, there is one setting that you will need to turn on in order to get your phone installed with Graphene. And this is before you switch from the Google Android operating system to Graphene. So what you'll want to do is open up your settings app on your new Google phone, scroll down to about phone, which is close to the bottom, tap that. Now scroll all the way down to build number. What we're doing here is we're turning on developer settings. So go ahead and tap build number seven times. And once you do that, you'll have developer options on your phone. So back out of about phone, tap on system, and here is where you will see developer options. So all you need to do now is tap developer options and scroll down until you see OEM unlocking. This is the one setting that needs to be enabled. By default, it is off, but you will be able to enable it as long as you're connected to Wi-Fi. So turn it on, and then that's it. That's all we need to do. At this point, we will restart the phone. When it's turning back on, you need to boot it into fast boot mode. You'll hold down power and down volume. Hold them together until the phone turns on. And once it's on, you'll see this screen, mostly black, with uh, some stuff on it. Now, don't worry about that. But what you need to do now is plug it into your computer. And this is the Graphene OS website at grapheneos.org. We're going to go ahead and click Install Graphene OS. There are two supported installation methods. We have the web USB-based installer and the command line. And we're going to use the web USB-based installer. So click that. You can look through all this information, show some prerequisites, what operating system you need on your computer to install it, what browsers you can use, enabling OEM unlocking, blah, 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 connecting the device. So when I click Unlock Bootloader, it should show my device here because I'm in fast boot mode and I've enabled OEM unlocking. So I will click that and connect. And now on my phone, it says do not unlock the bootloader or if I press a volume key, unlock the bootloader. So with unlock the bootloader selected, I'll press the power button. The phone will restart back into fast boot mode. And now the device state is unlocked. The next step, obtaining factory images. So you click download release. And it starts downloading. And we will fast forward through this. OK, so now we've finished downloading the factory image. It doesn't take that long. It should take less than 20 minutes. Depends on your internet speed. Now we have one more button to click, flashing the factory image. So go ahead and click Flash Release. Uh, you don't need to do anything else. It is now restarting my device, going through the process of installing the operating system onto uh, the Google Pixel. OK, and with that, there is one more step. You have to lock the bootloader. So click this button here. On your phone, you will see that a new option has shown up. You can either select do not lock the bootloader or press the volume down or volume up, lock the bootloader. Then you press the power button. The phone restarts. We can press the power button again to select start. And now the phone is booting up into Graphene OS. You will see another screen that says your device is loading a different operating system. Perfectly normal. And you see the Google logo, but your phone no longer has Google. It now has Graphene OS. 
And now you'll run through the setup. It's very similar to setting up your Google phone the way you did before. But you go through the setup, set a pin. You will find that using the phone is very similar to using a Google Android phone. However, there is no Google Play Store and there are not a lot of apps installed on the phone initially. So there's not much you can do except use the browser. The browser on Graphene is called Vanadium. What you're going to want to do is open Vanadium, download FDroid. And here's the FDroid website, f-droid.org, where you can click download FDroid. Now you'll be doing this from the browser on your phone. It will, in, it will download a .apk file. You can then install that. And this is what the app looks like. So search, find Aurora. You can look around, see if there are any other apps you want. But Aurora is really what you're going to want to get a lot of the apps that you know and use every day. Whatever you want. Just no Google apps and stay away from the meta Facebook apps. Don't install an app unless you actually need it. And we will look at the phone in the future. From here, it's very easy to use. Setting it up is easy. Installing your apps is easy. You may have some issues as you're using it. Things may not work exactly as you want, but I use Graphene all the time and I don't have a lot of problems with it. Yes, there are some apps you can't use, but you know what you're getting yourself into. If you're de-Googling your phone, you can't use the Google apps. And if you're de-Googling your phone, you probably don't want to use the other invasive apps like WhatsApp and Facebook and all that. There is a lot of stuff you can do with a Graphene phone, which is very nice. For example, you can disable your microphone, your camera, your location. You have no Google account on your phone, so Google isn't tracking what you're doing. There's a lot of stuff you can do that you just can't do on a Google phone. And because it's open source software, you can trust that what's going on on the device is open and audited by anyone who is capable of doing that. So we'll leave it at that. I hope this showed you very well that it is not complicated to de-Google your phone, to put an alternative operating system on your phone that is open source and secure. Graphene on a Google Pixel phone is very secure. So for more on Graphene OS, Linux, and other security and privacy focused applications and strategies for your digital privacy, please like, subscribe, and watch out for my future videos. Thank you very much.